video has very little to offer concerning the subject of the Moscow, Idaho murders. Don't watch it unless you're willing to basically have your time wasted. Also, at the end of the video will be a safety warning for people concerning a very specific aspect of this subject. 1122 King Road, Moscow, Idaho. The investigation is focused on the period of time from the 12th to the 14th of November 2022. Of 22,000 registered four-door white Hyundai Elantras, model year 2011-2013, 90 were registered or have been at the campus in some way. The information on this is kind of vague. I'm not going to go over it too much. Anyway, a vehicle similar or matching this sort of description was caught a mile away, actually 1.25 miles away, at 3.45 a.m. and 10 seconds at 821 White Avenue going westbound as it turned down a side street. This is the quote from the people from the person who said they saw it and also reevaluated their local copies of their camera video data and photos to find it. The camera that took this is most likely the northwest corner camera for the ExxonMobil gas station off Highway 8. The location was doxed effectively by Fox News reporting on it and basically pointing a camera where they shouldn't and basically endangering the person who's acting as a witness. So at this point, if you claim this video is doing the same thing, Fox News already did it and did it nationally. It was not the southeast or northeast cameras above the car wash that are used for liability purposes only. It was not on a Highway 8 to the south of the building or Blaine Street far and far away on the east. Fox News screen pick isn't good enough, and I'm going to cover that in a minute, and a safety warning you need to hear. Let's move on. This is the image blown up on the screen as best I can. It's an image crop from what was a full screen image that the software and hardware that was used should have given a raw copy of. Because it has a picture of some fingers, part of the camera, and a bunch of other garbage in here, um, it's almost useless. But I'm going to attempt to use it in this video to confirm or deny which camera it came from using imagery from this year and last year to confirm where the cameras are or were on the building. First thing up is this is a sidewalk and this somewhat straight line or very straight line curves down. That indicates that through this pathway here is a driveway. It has a curb cut there to be a driveway. We also see a center line here that is either unbroken or is a double line or something. And we see light reflecting off of it specifically. Lines drawn on highways and roads normally are retro reflective and reflective paint fleck mix. The light from the uh, next to the camera that took this is also going to be bounced off of it. So that's why I'm suspicious that this is a two lane, two direction road only here. The background appears to be snow, although I can't see because of a finger here. Um, this seems like a fairly straight line. It seems to curve back on itself here and then go off this direction. And this appears to be snow in the background, but I can't tell. If we did not have an image from the camera, I could very positively identify exactly which angle and what image I'm seeing. But that's not possible. Either A, because Fox News had someone incompetent show up, or B, a person who isn't a journalist or a photographer, but an ordinary citizen, took the photo for them using their camera on their cell phone. I'm not going to throw shade on the person who did the image if they weren't a photographer or journalist. However, if it was Fox News, there is no technical reason for them to do this mistake because of the next image. This is the image they took of the screen, noting the time. It's down to the second. That's a very useful information on the 13th at 345. It should be pointed out, due to the fact that software that's used for this purpose, it is not required to actually have the time and date stamp correct. It isn't. This could be off by an hour. It could be 245 or 445, depending on what time of year it is, whether or not the area does time and date stamp shifts of an hour for daylight savings time. I want to point out one thing in the image. This image here is probably not the image that was being photographed by the uh, cell phone camera. 
I want to point out that you can see a, um, I'm going to call it a pothole cover. It's actually tinier than that. And it's surrounded by cement in a black top area. And it has two holes in it for opening it. This is going to be significant in a minute. But I want to point out that this camera view here doesn't appear to be pointing at the same image. It's missing most of it, number one. Number two, it's pointing at the ground in front of the building, aiming west rather than mostly north. This, again, is the image we were talking about, and oddly enough, zooming out makes it somewhat easier to try to figure out what's going on here. Again, this should not have been taken this way. Now I'm going to go to a Google Street View. It's from 2015, but it's pretty close. I want you to make note of the sidewalk, this curb cut, center line, and this side of the street, and this straight line here. Now, we, we see here a sidewalk, a curb cut, and we see this straight line here. I'm going to go back again. That kind of almost matches. Um, on the 13th of the month, did it snow in that part of Idaho? That's a guess. I don't know. And we're looking roughly um, northeast from this angle. Now, I'm going to zoom back out, and we can see this is the north west corner of the building. On the other side of this rock or stone here is going to be the camera. Now I'm going to point down at the ground for just a second and point to this. This here is the only two points of pull-up cover within a tarmac area with a cement round. Back then it said no parking, etc. in 2015. We're going to zoom out in a minute, but there isn't any other place out here that matches it. So that means there was a camera up here pointing down, or at least that was the lower left-hand corner of it when Fox News visited. Now we're going to go out here and look at the location from whence this image was taken. Really quickly, I'm going to turn around and point out that the lines are gone. There's the round there. There's the cameras there on the building. I'm going to move one notch, hopefully. And we can see if we look at the building, we can see the camera sticking out. There's one here, and maybe one or two here. We don't see any other cameras on the walls here, but we do see one, the liability camera, on the northeast end here. It's supposed to observe your car exiting a car wash to prove it wasn't damaged by the car wash. That's what it's for. Most of these cameras are for that purpose. This camera is pointing, apparently, at this edge here. This is a more open area here, and this area here has curb cuts, but that's not where you would see that sort of thing, so that's got to be the camera. And we're going to go up to where the car was at the moment the photo was taken. 821 East White Avenue. Going this direction. The statement, we'll call it testimony, of the person who was there that night is that the car was headed this direction and then went down a side street. And if we look at the blow up map here and zoom in a bit, that means it went down White Avenue that turns into Steiner Avenue. Okay? All right. Now I'm going to look at the other possibilities for the cameras just really quickly. There could be cameras in here. In fact, there probably is a few of them. But that doesn't appear to be what was used to get the image of the car. We can try looking here at other places where there are cameras. We'll look at the other liability camera on the other end of the car wash here. It's right there. We don't have, apparently, any other cameras here except for maybe, and I'm saying maybe, maybe, camera up on top here maybe or not and this road out here is not a two-lane road with a single line in the middle that would retro reflect on a, on a light source so again what I'm saying here is that we are very likely dealing with a camera that was excuse me that was given almost that same angle there towards that house again without the actual raw image that should have been dumped by hitting a button and there is a button in the upper left-hand corner for it, probably. Should be. Uh, we don't have any other data. Now, if it was an image taken from one of the other cameras, we would have gotten the vacuum cleaner, an air blower, some other stuff. So this has got to be the only direction. Now we're going to go on to the next image really quickly. This is the pathway that was probably taken by the vehicle. Again, 345 tentatively is an accurate number. It could be off by a full hour. It could even be off by a day, too, but let's assume just an hour. Traveling this direction towards the you know, 1.2 miles to get to the murder scene. 
Now, at the same day, at 3.15 a.m., according to a camera that was at a building pointed north, a car matching this description went from right to left in the field of view towards the house. At 2.58 a.m., another camera that was a body cam worn by somebody shows a, ca uh, a vehicle that's very suspiciously similar. Now, that calls into question very much that this was 3.45 a.m. This could have been 2.45 a.m. Adding four minutes to it, that would make it around 2.49 a.m. or 2.50. 2.50 a.m. is close enough to these two times to indicate that it was very likely because these two cameras over here, body cam and a house cam, are almost an hour earlier. I'm assuming that the date and time recording function at the uh, Exxon was wrong by an hour. Just saying. So that gives us plenty of time to come here. Unless, of course, uh, we want to decide that a person did a run-through once before and then changed their mind and went back. Now let's explore that really quickly. That would indicate the person lives east of that Exxon. It does. It would indicate that they should be concentrating a lot of work over there trying to find it. They should look at every camera along this pathway because if you do your pathway in Google Street View or Google Maps from here to here, you get this map. It's a very easy straight shot. And it goes right past where those other two cameras were. So to review, it was probably going by at 2.45 a.m., but I don't know. And it was on the 13th, and Fox News screen pick isn't good enough, and we need the raw image from the data recoverer, the data recorder. Now I'm going to bring up a simple thing. This is the last part. Every one of you that works at a business that uses cameras for liability reasons or for safety, for instance, if you're worried about being robbed and you work at a 7-Eleven, unless you can immediately, without asking any permission or getting permits or getting a password, if you can't immediately grab an image of a robber, it's worthless. And it's a liability and a safety issue for you. You shouldn't have to point your camera at a TV screen or a computer screen to get the security camera data. It should be dumped raw. Period. You should be able to get full motion video if it's available and screen grabs to get the guy immediately forward the information to the police, dump it on Facebook. Hey, everybody, look for this guy. They just robbed my business. If you work at a place that does not provide you with the ability to immediately grab this data and dump it to make sure that your safety is insured so you can catch the person, that business is creating a major liability so that you could sue them. Attention business owners, teach your employees how to do a data dump. As long as it doesn't damage the files, there's nothing wrong with this. Let them grab the data and post it. Don't stop them from doing it. Don't listen to your lawyers. And don't make them have to point a camera at a freaking screen like this. This is absolutely unacceptable. Now I want to point out a couple of things. A lot of this, like this dot and this dot and a bunch of other stuff, is, is, is stuff on the screen. It could be on the camera. And the fact that this image was taken completely out of focus is terrible. Again, if it was Fox News that did it, and they call themselves journalists, which they're not, they've, they've disclaimed being uh, a news station a long time ago because they don't want to be at fault for that. They're just entertainment. This is poor journalism. If this is an ordinary citizen, I apologize that you went through this, and I'm sorry you did this, and I'm sorry you had to do this. I hope that's not really the case. I'd like to just be blaming Fox at this point. And if you're a business owner and you made your, your employees do it this way, shame on you. It's a safety issue. Fix it. Show them where the dump picture or send picture to the cops button is. Let them get the information. Don't make them wait for you to show up at the business. That's dumb. Every place I've ever worked for that had a problem like this, I solved it for the employees and in the face of the, of the boss told them, don't you dare change this or I'll testify on their behalf if anything goes wrong. And you know what? They never changed it back and the employees had access. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Good luck with that. And yeah, it was that specific direction and I'm pretty sure it was off by an hour.